Omo, I am shocked hearing this. Governor Hope Uzodima, the present governor of Imo State, Dofa Ali Komat, can address Nigerians and Indimu. And the man also talk how it win the election, how it become the governor of Imo State. If you come across this video, please make sure you spread this video. Make sure you share this video so that other Nigerians will still hear what I'm hearing. See, guys, just enjoy the video and I'll write back. That have a direct impact on the people, irrespective of ideological differences. His pragmatic socialism benefited both the government and the people. It was like a man eating his cake while still having it. If he had given heed to those theoretical considerations before implementing the Eastern Nigerian Development Plan, what we know today of the Southeast and South South would have recorded a stunted growth. But by shunning corruption and embracing development, he wrote his name in gold. That, I believe, is the living lesson all of us should learn from his leadership. Now, taking advantage of the offer by the organizers of this lecture, to link my emo experience, there is no doubt that this inspiring story of legendary MI power has rubbed off on me in my tour of duty as the governor of Imo State. Although I, did, I didn't have the luxury of understanding directly with my predecessors, I leveraged the experience of this master and others like him. I said I was only 21 years old when I returned from exile, but the impression I had of him and that of Chief Sam Mbakwe, another charismatic leader, prepared me for where I am today. Unlike others who had leadership trust on them, it is the grace of God and my struggle that made me to become governor of Imo State. I started this journey. I started this journey in 2003 running for an election against an incumbent. After that, my people persuaded me to represent them in the Senate. That was in 2011. I served for eight years in the Senate. After that, there was another invitation, this time from Imo people, asking me to contest for the governorship election for the collective interest of Imo people. I also responded. The election was held and I won convincingly. <laughs> listen, listen. <clears throat> but the mandate, the mandate was stolen. And I had to spend seven months before I reclaimed the mandate through the courts. Thereafter, thereafter, I hit the ground running because I was already prepared to be governor. I had my blueprint for the governance of Imo State. In addition to the manifesto of my great party, the All Progressive Congress, I was not deterred by the fact that there was no formal handover of power to me, nor by the fact that the state had been run down and abandoned, but I was determined to move on, and I did. Under my prosperity agenda, encapsulated in reconstruction, rehabilitation, and recovery, I moved fast to get him working again, starting from the civil service, which is the engine of government, to road construction and reconstruction. My administration was able to restore and recover the years the locusts had eaten. <laughs> today, today we can boast of having the most efficient and automated civil service east of the Niger. This is our pride. They are well motivated. The civil service is working. Salaries paid regularly and as at when do. Pensions and the gratuities being given the attention it deserves. 
That gave me an idea of how to tackle other needs of the people. The Owere capital city was without public water when I emerged as the governor of Imo State for 15 years. I restored that and it started working. Adapam Nigerian Limited, an agricultural legacy of Dr. Michael Obara, was in ruins. I got it working again. Because the roads in the states were in terrible shape, I started working on them. As of November 2023, I had delivered on more than 100 roads, including the signature projects of the Olu Owere Road, dualized, the Owere Okigwe Road, and the Owere Omaha Road. I also checked the perennial flooding in parts of Owere City. In education, the administration is funding and running three universities, and the only state in Nigeria running three universities on their own including several nursing and midwifery schools. We have also embarked on the rehabilitation of all primary and secondary schools in the state. The Imo State University Teaching Hospital, Olo, which was hitherto bad from producing medical doctors because of the inadequacy of facilities and the withdrawal of the accreditation, is now up and running. For the past three years, it has been churning out medical doctors. We have three brand new hospitals built and equipped to world class, and as well as getting others fully rehabilitated. As usual, our students maintain their premier positions in external examinations because the schools are once more working and now well equipped with qualified teachers manning them. It might interest you to know that all the farm settlements established by Dr. Michael Opara in what is now known as Imo State have all been rehabilitated and they are in operations. Millions, millions of palm trees are being planted across the state to stimulate more interest in agriculture for sustainable development. Encouraging food security was Michael Opara's vision. Happily, it is the focal point of President Bola Ahmed Tinimbu's led administration. It is also the vision of my government. Currently, all the communities in the state are being encouraged to establish one agro-based enterprise through our One Kindred, One Business Initiative, OKOBI. This will stimulate industrial growth in the rural areas, create jobs, and stimulate the state's economy. With the excellent network of roads, spanning the 27 local government areas of the state. The movement of goods and services has become more accessible, thus relieving pressure on the urban, center, the urban centers. For our youths, we have suffered unemployment due to the global economic recession. We created a ministry for empowerment and digital economy to equip them with relevant digital and other skills for employment and self-employment. Thousands of them have been trained in various skills and provided tools and money to start up their businesses. Women also benefited from the scheme. Also, under the Skill Up Imo project, thousands of other youths have been trained in the digital economy and the requisite packages presented to them. Currently, many of them are working abroad while others have become employers of labor. The bottom line is that my government has been planning for the future of our youths. And just like the Great Opera rolled out the Eastern Development Plan, I have initiated an EMO development plan, which will run from 2023 to 2034. Under this plan, which obviously will outlive my administration, a holistic and deliberate roadmap has been set for the economic renaissance of our state. I've already put things in motion through the dredging of the Oguta Lake to the Atlantic Ocean, which will change the economic landscape of not only Imo State, but the entire Southeast. <laughs> the, economic, the economic potential of this project is enormous. 
including an energy free trade zone, which will leverage the abundance of hydrocarbon deposits in the area to attract investors, bat industries, and grow a robust economy. The job creation potentials of this zone is excellent indeed. During my first tenure, I embarked on rehabilitating some moribund industries and establishing new ones through a public-private partnership, Adapan Nigerian Limited, Imo Standard Shoes, the Avotopotri, and others are among the beneficiaries of this initiative. Just like the Great Opera, I also realized that having stabilized the critical infrastructure, especially roads, and knowing that our health and the education sectors were under control and running smoothly, I decided to turn my attention to the total industrialization of the state. Realizing that this could never be feasible without a regular power supply, the government of Imo State has entered into a partnership agreement, taking out advantage of the latest alteration of our constitution, removing power from the exclusive legislative list to the concurrent legis legislative list. We have now, working with our technical and financial partners, created a platform to generate, transmit, and distribute electricity to the 27 local government areas of the state. <laughs> the rehabilitation of the abandoned Eboma power plant, which has been recently transferred to Imo State government, is pivotal to the 24-hour power supply. And by the grace of God, this power project will be completed and commissioned in the first quarter of 2025. I must thank, at this juncture, most especially the president, President Bola Ahmed Tunimbu, for approving that the abandoned Eboma power plant be transferred to Imo State, and now for Imo State to complete and utilize. This means that our artisans, small and medium scale enterprises, and of course large industries will have uninterrupted power supply to power their businesses. This will certainly enhance the economy of our state and by extension, the economy of Nigeria. In anticipation of a booming business environment, Imo State government has entered into an agreement for the building of a 200-bed five-star Marriott Hotel in Oweri, and the full rehabilitation of the iconic Concord Hotel built by Sam Bakwe to be managed by heating group of group chains. That would align with Obara's vision of setting up residential hotels in Portakot and the Enugu. It will boost employment. It will enhance the state's internally generated revenue and help our tourist industry to grow. Our comparative advantage as an oil producing state, which is also awash with gas deposits, will come in handy in our industrialization drive. While I have given you a snippet of my experience in governance, let me inform you that when I started this quest for the position of governor, I made a vow to God to govern with his fear through accountability and honesty. I will never know how Dr. Michael Obara came about that, that he was able to emerge untainted in his political career. But I believe that the remaining truth to my vow will certainly help me so far. Because as I speak, nobody can come out openly to accuse me of corruption. My close aides. And I challenge anybody, I challenge anybody. My close aides who engaged in untoward activities never knew how fast they were thrown out of government. I'm still living like in houses as a governor, as the governor of Imo State. I'm still living in houses I built before I became the governor. A few weeks ago, when I addressed Imo legislators, on the occasion of their first anniversary, I again emphasized the need for us to render selfless service to the people of the state 
and not to be driven by the acquisition of wealth. Since I'm a human being, susceptible to making mistakes, I set up what I call the Emo Stakeholders Forum and the Elders Council to interface with me regularly. I meet with the members who comprise of former governors, deputy governors, judges, first class traditional rulers, student leaders, and market leaders. We meet periodically to render account of stewardship to them. This is a form of accountability, one of the principles of public service. These interactions give the members of the two bodies a chance to freely criticize and advise me on the policy direction of my administration. Above all, they act as a feedback mechanism between my government and the people to render gossip and fifth columnists jobless. Let me now try to conclude. At the beginning of this lecture, I sounded a warning that there won't be any comparison between what the great opera did in eastern Nigeria and my modest efforts in Imo State. If for any reason you have noticed some similarities between his policies. Thank you for watching that video. So guys, before you leave, look at the top here. You will see where the road subscribe. Just subscribe to this great platform and also put on Sean Bear so that whenever we upload any video in this great platform, you will be the first to see it. And don't forget to share this video to all social media platforms on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, and also on YouTube so that everyone out there will see this video. So guys, see you guys some other time.